we're going to have a tendency chart that's very accurate of, of what he's going to do first pitch, second pitch versus somebody, which only helps our hitters out, which maybe we can score a few more runs and, and win a game or win a district. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesome Inks Podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. What's up, studs? Thanks so much for joining this episode of Awesome Inc. on our podcast. I'm pretty pumped. We got a room full of professional athletes. We're all laced up in our cleats, signed by Nike, our stirrups, our baseball pants, and of course, everyone's favorite, sick fighting sleeve. I'm just kidding. Fighting's not a brand I use anymore, but this is going to be a cool podcast. I'm pumped because I played high school baseball and that's where my athletic journey ended. And I'm here with some talented, talented guys who are actually bringing some baseball and startups to a very cool intersection. So Tommy, Justin, Jesse with Zone Tracks are here at Awesome Inc. And this room feels a lot, a lot of testosterone going on. I'm excited. (laughs) And to, to kick it off, Justin, you're across the room from me. Tell me your favorite baseball movie of all time. You know, if I had to choose, which would be really tough, I'd like, the first thing that comes to mind is Rookie of the Year, but I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to tell you it's a league of their own. A league of their own. What a performance by Tom Hanks, one of the most famous quotes in baseball, which is, there's no crying in baseball. That's good. Tommy, what about you, man? Bull Durham, all the way. Kevin Costner, love that one. Um, Even, I think it stands the test of time as well. You know, it's... 80s, so it's been around for a long time, uh, and even watching it this year, it's it's amazing. I feel like I watch it beginning of baseball season every year, um, all around, just awesome movie. Sweet. And last but not least, Jay. A um, little older than that, uh, Field of Dreams. You know, out there mowing his mowing his corn so that they can play ball and bring all those old school players back in. No, I love it. I love it. So, guys, tell me how how did this group of founders come together? Was it through baseball? Was it through a random coffee shop meetup. How did the journey of Zone Tracks officially start? It uh, it started me and Matt. Uh, he wasn't able to get here today, but me and Matt coached baseball at Henry Clay, and we were really struggling in the zone, and the, the hitters just struggling communicating to each other, struggling communicating to coaches, and we weren't making any progress. And we started drawing stuff up on a napkin one night, and it just kind of kept piling on, piling on. And we started talking to people about building out an app and Justin works with me at Lafayette. So I kind of was spitballing off him cause he's a smart guy, you know, I want to get his input. And, uh, he kind of jumped on board and then he kind of started asking Tommy questions when Tommy left teaching and we knew he was getting into the app business and, uh, he didn't really know what we were up to, but we were, we were testing him. And, uh, and then we're like, okay, it's time to go ask Tommy, get, get our fourth guy on board and get this thing rolling. That's so sweet. So let me ask you this question real quickly. So you teach at Lafayette, mm-hmm. but you coach at Henry Clay. Yeah. How is that local division treating you? It uh, It's real tough when we play each other, but the rest of the time it's a blast. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy being at Lafayette and then having the ability to leave and go coach a team that I don't see them all day long. So that's, that's a, it's, a big, it's a big fun time. I totally get that. Justin, tell me, either of you guys want to chime in about how y'all met, if there's anything in that juicy story that wasn't mentioned? Yeah, me and, me and Jesse actually go back uh, – Quite a ways. I think about the time he started coaching baseball was around the same time that I started umpiring baseball. And so a lot of our interactions were on the field and I just thought he was a really cool guy. And then Jesse was teaching. I was still in college. I was right at the end of it and I had to do some observations. Had to go to Lafayette with Mr. Peters. Well, then I just knew him as Jesse. So I didn't really think about it you know, otherwise showed up and there's coach Peters. I'm like, dude, what's up? So our friendship kind of grew over time. And, uh, and then I got a job at Lafayette. Like you said, we spent a little more time together. We coached together. Um, and just to reiterate what, yeah, what he said, we, we just kind of bounced some ideas off each other and it grew from there. And I was actually paying attention at one of the meetings at the end of the year for school. And uh, during this meeting, they talk about, they, they say, hey, here's the good news and, and here's what other people are doing or if there's any changes being made. And one of the changes was Tommy was leaving. And uh, one of the things they talked about was he was going to go do app development. And that just kind of caught my ear. And so when, like Jesse said, when I got an opportunity to ask him about it and pick his brain about it, then uh, we kind of knew he was the guy. Yeah, and it turned out awesome from there. Just, uh, 
you know, for me, because I, I left teaching to become a full time freelance app developer. Um, and it was that first summer. And I, I can remember like searching for jobs, trying to find things that were things that I was really interested about and like trying to search for baseball stuff. And these guys came to me like, hey, we want to make a baseball app. And it's like dream come true for me. That's exactly what I want to be doing. You know, combine, you know, baseball. That's been a huge passion of mine since I was a little kid um, with app development. That was like my my new thing that summer. Um, so it was, it was just so cool to be able to build a, a baseball app, um, because it's something that I'd, I'd wanted to do for a long time. Very nice. So real quickly, what's everyone's baseball background? Uh, I'll go first. I, uh, I played high school ball, was a pitcher catcher, came to UK, played a little club ball, and now I've been coaching for 10 years over at Henry Clay. Yeah, I, uh, high school, you know, played, played since I was a little kid, even as far as far back as Little League. And uh, when I got to college, it just wasn't something that where I went to UK, I was a little bit of a smaller guy, decided to uh, opt out of the playing days and opt into the umpiring days. Yeah, I, uh, from Lexington, grew up here. So, uh, you know, all the way to Little League over at Eastern Little League, played high school ball at Lafayette. Um, and then went on to play at University of Kentucky, played four years there and was part of the um, only team to ever win the SEC championship there. So that was a really yeah, cool year go. back in 06. We're not worthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then ended my career back in 08, was my, my senior year there. Uh, got into coaching, coached at uh, Bryan Station for a little while, coached at Lafayette for a little while. Um, got out of coaching after my, my second kid was born. Um, and then actually got, after a 12-year hiatus, um, got picked up professionally this year to play for the Legends. That's right. <laughs> hey, again, what, what we are amazing. not worthy, dude. Yeah. We are not worthy. Here he is, the golden arm, arm of Lexington. So, yeah, and that's been, they've got the, the Legends and the Leyendas and then the Florence Freedom and the Florence Yalls in this Battle of the Bourbon Trail. Uh, and it's been probably one of the most unique years in baseball, uh, especially for me to have not played for 12 years and then to step in with guys that are, you know, a lot of these guys that are, you know, just out of playing in the big leagues or currently, you know, playing double A ball. Uh, it's just been, it's been a really wild experience to be able to go in and play for the legends this year. Uh, after, like I said, not playing for 12. <laughs> well, all I can say is that is so impressive, man, to take a 12 year hiatus. If anyone's listening, let me go ahead and tell you now, if we had a tech malfunction and this shuts off, you are never too old. So never too old. With never that, too old. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in your, your, about your company. So you guys pitched at August five across again, talking about a unique situation. Really cool that our community was able to come to the legend stadium at Whitaker bank ballpark. And here you guys pitch, you guys were decked out in legends jerseys. It was a cool moment and to actually pitch a business pitch about your startup from the pitcher's mound. Again, wow, this baseball theme is getting, getting real. So you guys talk about zone tracks. So this is an analytical app that allows teams to easily record and save stats for opposing players, your team, and it's all at the tab of your fingers. So no more tracking books, no more probably radar guns, all that good stuff. So you guys are to be used in pregame, during the game, and postgame, so the way most sports teams watch film or whatever, and you're looking to have an advantage over your opponents, not like the Astros. And that, I'm going to leave like it there. Not like the Astros, not like so, the Astros. <laughs> again, for everyone who was not at Five Across, I would like for you guys to almost walk us back through your pitch. And I know you guys had a, a few problems that you identified. And so the first one you talk about how it's currently very expensive to, to track the zone strike data and how some competitors as TrackMan, FlightScope, and Yakertech, if I pronounce that correctly, you know, charge up to five figures for these advanced analytics. So I would love, Jesse, you're, you're, you're to my left. I'm looking at you. Can you talk how much, you know, you guys are wanting to service cost per player? Is this per team or a coach? What does that look like from a financial perspective and what is the value that you guys bring? Um, like you said, we, we're really trying to, everybody can keep those charts in the, in the dugout still, but we want to take those charts and make them usable. We've all been in the game long enough now that we see those charts get written out and they just get stuffed away. So having this ability where you can do it at the tap of your finger and it's going to compile the data and you can print it off and look at it, it's just it's going to change the game, we think, for, uh, for kids and for the coaches to be able to use it and develop players. And right now we're pricing it for coaches and for viewers. So if you're the tracker, say you're a team, 
the the price is nineteen ninety nine a month, and then for the year it's one nineteen ninety nine for the year, and they can use that all year long. It's going to compile all that data for that team, and then if a if a player wants to see it or a parent wants to see it, they can actually download the app and they can view what the coach sends to them, and that's going to be two ninety nine a month and. I think it's seventeen ninety nine a month for the year. So they'll be able to see all that data and they'll be able to take it to their, their pitching coach or hitting coach or back to practice and they'll be able to see where they're good and where they're weak and start making adjustments, especially in game. And that's the big thing is what's in game. Yeah. You you practice how you perform. Or sorry, you perform how you practice. And if you can perfect that, absolutely. Justin, tell me you guys want to chime into that as well. We want to give players and coaches an opportunity to have more quality practice, just kind of like you spoke about. And and what that looks like kind of build off Jesse is, hey, we with this data, teams are already keeping pitch charts, right, um, spray charts. And if we can take this data and look at it and then decide where we're weak, where we're deficient, and then we can specifically target those areas of a player – then I feel like you're gonna you're gonna get a lot more return on your investment. And you spoke about some of the other uh, some of the other companies that that do analytics. The thing about some of these, they've tried to automate a lot of these uh, a lot of the processes, which is really awesome, right? Something like TrackMan. But the problem is the cost gets upwards of ten thousand plus. Right, that's a lot of money that's for pocket say a change. What are you talking about? pocket yeah. change. Well, maybe to you and I, but you know your local high school team, maybe sure, not so much, sure. right? And so, if we're able to offer you something similar, something that does the majority of what that does at a fraction of the cost, I just think your return on investment is going to be so much greater. And not just from a financial standpoint, right? It's the return on the investment you make in your players and yourself, your team. And that's what we tried to to model things off of. Is was we looked at we looked at TrackMan that's used by tons of colleges out there and we looked at StatCast that's used professionally and we tried to think of what what can we do from this and how can we get 90% of the way there? So there's there's certain things like all the spin rate and these really advanced metrics that we're not able to get, but there there are like a lot of the quality, um, you know, zone location, we're able to get that and be able to get tendencies on hitters to see where they're hot and cold, kind of like what you'd see in a, in a video game. Um, and we're able to pull how pitchers throw their, their curveballs in specific counts or where they tend to miss with them, uh, how often they can throw it for strikes. And, and all this information that we think is really, really valuable for, for like he said, like a fraction of the cost. And so my, my thing has always been, we're able to get, if you look at the stuff that they do on TV with StatCast, we're able to get 90, 95% of the way there for 1% of the cost, maybe even less than 1%. Very, very cool. And something I was thinking about even before we met was say what a average average high school team has 18 players. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up in Louisville, played baseball at uh, Louisville Mill High School, and I remember we would have you know thirty at least thirty plus games a year. So if yeah. we if we yeah. face twenty unique teams and each player or each star each team has you know fifteen to twenty players, I was thinking you know this is this is kind of a niche or niche however you pronounce you want to say that word potential startup. But actually, if you spread that across a state, you're touching thousands of coaches and players, which is so cool. So. You guys have, you might have a home run here, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, that was a bad pun. I like that. No, yeah, home good run, puns. grand slam. <laughs> yeah. All puns are welcome around Hit here. for the cycle, whatever, yeah. whatever we want to call it. Yeah. So another, another problem that you guys shared is that it takes multiple players and, and or coaches to chart and scout teams by hand. Again, I remember being on the dugout next to some of the pitchers who are off or maybe going to come in later in the game and you're tracking everything's, everything from the coach's call to your, your teammates accuracy on the mound. So you guys have shared you want to compile and compute all this data across the game. So does this cross over the line in your opinion of blending too much of technology into sports or do you have, yeah, what, what are your stances on a healthy balance between those two? Well, I, I think that, you know, that, that's a fine line and it can be easily crossed, right? But for what we're doing, we're, we're taking some processes that are, are, are manual, right? People are, are taking these charts and literally taking a pen and putting it to paper, right? And making these charts by hand. All we're doing is expediting that process, right? And here's the thing about that is as a coach, and Jesse knows, he's kept these charts, how hard is it to gather those charts and, and gather some information from it, right? A lot of times, you guys, what do you do with the charts? What does your coach, your head coach do? Yeah, I mean, if, if they, didn't, they might just go into a file and we pull them out for the next game, but, but nothing's compiled over and over and over. Whereas if we go see Scott County four or five times and we see a kid throw, 
man, it, we're going to have an advantage if I, if I track him on this app and I see him throw six times because I'm kind of going to know what he's going to throw and what count and what's going on. So not to really steal on their signs, but we're going to have a tendency chart that's very accurate of, of what he's going to do first pitch, second pitch versus somebody, which only helps our hitters out, which maybe we can score a few more runs and, and win a game or win a district or whatever it might be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and being able to get those tendencies, it takes time to decipher that, to take this handwritten data and turn that into something that speaks to you or that you can make sense of. But with Zone Tracks, with our app, I mean, it kind of just does it for you, which is nice. While, you know, I think it's always nice to have things done for you, right? We all like that. But uh, that, that's really what it speaks to is just expediting the process, making it easier. Not only easier to do, but easier to interpret, right? So to read these things and, and then be able to make changes, whether it be in real time in the game or pregame, postgame. Yeah, this is great. This is continuing along some of the questions I had specifically. So... How are you guys able to implement this during the game? Is it from the dugout or are you guys actually allowed to be, you know, in one of the coaching boxes on the first base or third base side in foul territory? Or do you guys have to be hidden since you have your phones out? Because again, someone who is unaware might think, oh, they're, they're stealing signs or they're recording videos. How would you guys combat this as you talk with a potential client, which could be a coach or maybe uh, a school's AD? Uh, high school wise right now, we found out, I mean, the best way is if there's a camera coming over the pitcher's shoulder, because you can really see the zone that way. But we've been tracking the college league and some, some other games and sitting behind home plate left or right. You're very, you know, you very, you have the ability to track the pitch. You can know what the pitch type is usually most of the time. And if you miss the pitch type, it's okay. If somebody's there with you and you can use the radar gun, you can actually throw the miles per hour in there. So you're catching all that data. And you can do the spray chart. So one guy, maybe two guys, can track the entire game from behind home plate. And the way ours works is we can instantly send it to somebody in the dugout if they want to see it. Other than that, they, that's the only way they're going to get it. But sure. we were talking to a lot of college teams, and they're not allowed to use technology in the dugout. So anything that's kept in the college, it just kept, it's kept, and then they get to use it after the game. Okay. So that's that's their way. And it's, you know, I, I think it's amazing, even even if we can't use it in the game. Like, uh, so I had, when I was out playing for the Legends, I had some of the other guys track my game so that I could remember it. And it's it's amazing as a pitcher, when you, you get in the game and you're so focused on the task at hand and you're focused on on one specific pitch and you get out and you you finish the game and it's like, you know, what did I do? And you, you know, all that adrenaline, it's easy to forget that stuff. So even if you're just reviewing it after the game and trying to figure out how was my curveball today? How effective was my changeup? And we've got it broken down to where you can see, you know, every single hit in the game, how many hits were off the fastball? How many hits were off the curveball? How many were off the changeup? And it's such a such an amazing reflection tool after the game. So even you know even if we can't get it in the dugout, if it's just after the game, if it's just scouting reports before the game, I think it's I think it's even valuable there. And what's you know what's cool is ideally we want to use it you know before, during, and after the game. That's best case scenario. But if it's two out of the three, I think it's still an amazing tool right there. As you guys have talked about some other tech training aids that teams are using. And most of them are only able to use this during practice. And again, so you, you touched upon that. And as you guys move forward, and duh, you'll have smashing success. So as you guys are growing on a rapid pace, how do you plan to talk about that with you know coaches or whoever is in control of the, what is it? K-H-S-A-A. And, nice. and all of the rules. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that. <laughs> that happened gotcha. from years ago. So how would you go about talking about, hey, this is only a tool that is going to be helpful for teams. How would maybe a potential conversation from your guys' current position as coaches building this thing, how would you deliver that conversation to whomever is deciding rules? You know, you, they're already integrating technology into baseball at the high school level, okay? There's, uh, uh, they actually keep the book. I believe every team in Kentucky, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I believe every team in Kentucky is required to use an iPad to track their games via Game Changer, okay? And what Game Changer does, it offers a lot of stats, but, but really it's just keeping the book, right? And I believe the need was that, hey, we're trying to track uh, – Pitch numbers for pitchers. We don't want we don't want kids throwing too much, too many pitches in a week or whatever that set time may be. So that's why they implemented that, and it allows them to have a a, a, a lot more transparency, right, into how many pitches kids are throwing. So uh, from that standpoint, I think there's an interest in integrating technology in a game, in the game. I don't see that as as people trying to stay away from it, you know. So I do believe that that opens up a window and and 
really we can use that one particular instance as leverage for ourselves. Yeah, player safety, that's huge. Yeah. Um, and, and with us, you know, you don't, it's not about just pitch count. You'll get that with us, but there's so much more data that they could find useful about their players in Kentucky, right? And, uh, you know, with that being said, I'm going to pass it off to Tommy or Jesse and see if they have any input on this. So. This is yeah, good no, stuff. I, I, th- I think adding this this in, if if we get if we can talk to Kentucky High School about this, I think it's it's a different stat that we want to keep. We don't want to we'll keep the batting average and all that stuff, but nobody's tracking what somebody does in game in the zone. And we can tell you where you're hot and cold, and then you can go apply that into a practice, or you can take that to a lesson. These these parents are paying fifty to hundred dollars for a lesson. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I used to take uh, hitting lessons from Chris Burke. Yeah, you know, back in Louisville. Now you can walk in there, you have your app, and you're like, hey, here's where I'm not hitting well. Here's what I've done this season. Here's where I've done this game. Here's where this guy got me. You know, same thing, pitching guy. Hey, this guy's going in. He's throwing great. Hey, I missed here, and I gave up these hits. Well, hey where were you spotting up on that curveball and stuff? So what's your aim point where you're throwing? So I think it's just what we're going after is going to change, you know, kids IQ. It's going to help them learn more about the game and hopefully develop quicker and get more out of a lesson. Sweet. Well, I'll let you guys know when I have my six sons and they're all going up in the league, they'll use this. Absolutely. That's what we want to hear right there, man. So do you guys currently have any clients that you guys that are using this or are you guys still in beta mode? What's the current state of zone tracks? Uh, we're still kind of in the beta mode. We uh, we had the college league using it, and we'd go out there and we'd track the games for them. So we'd be up at LCA tracking it, and then me and Tommy went and talked to some of the guys, and they seemed super interested. Uh, we were letting them just check it out for free, and some of the kids were always wondering what they were doing in the game and stuff. So I think as it grows and, and kids and coaches figure out what information it's telling them, I think that, that'll be the big thing. Because some kids and some parents still look at it and they're like, I don't understand the analytics that you're telling me yet. So I think as it grows and we can explain to them what they're looking at and how it can benefit them, I think that's when it's going to really jump off. Really cool. I think even even when you just said that, my mind thought of this is a great way for high schoolers, you know, kids from 14 to 18 who think adults and coaches are ancient. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an easy way to help close that age gap. Yeah, I, th- I think kids respond well to seeing percentage and seeing an image sure. and, and really seeing what's going on compared to a coach being like, hey, I, I feel like you're doing this in the box. Well, hey, now I, I got something that's guaranteed that says what you're doing. That's great. And I think that's a great segue into us for the fall as colleges are ramping practices back up because now what we can do is we can go to these these players that we're playing in Lexington and we can send their coaches these reports and say, hey, this is how your player pitched this summer. This is what they need to work on. This is how they had success in the summer. And as a coach, that's got to be so much more valuable for them to get that hard data versus just you know potentially talking to a coach and seeing something like ERA that they did, you know, good, bad, something like that. Now we can really drill down at how they did with a specific pitch, send that back to the coaches. And our hope is is that we're able to send that information to the coaches and they start adopting that in practice and then we start bringing on more and more teams. Because I don't know how many colleges were represented in that college league this summer. I'd imagine it's dozens. Oh, it's 30s, yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that's now all these people that we've already got data that we can send out to them and start having those conversations. But that's, for us, I feel like that's huge is to get these colleges back playing again so that we can, you know, get them out and get them using it. And, you know, we've already, we've been in talks with Moorhead softball since really the beginning of it. Um, And one of our, one of our ways that we'll be able to do stuff there is go to their camps and track stuff at their camps. And then when the kids leave the camps, then they've got the report from us, but then also hopefully they like it and are taking it back to their high school teams. So that's a huge distribution point is going into the camps, going into the, you know, the coaches convention that's always in the winter and being able to talk to more coaches. Um, Hopefully if uh, gatherings start happening again, uh, you know, that's an opportunity for us to really start selling as well. Man, that's great. Even, you know, totally even space and didn't even think of, yeah, softball. That's another huge market. I was even thinking. We'll tap both sides. We'll go baseball and softball. Exactly. And even, I know in Lexington, there's a guy named Ted Simpson who runs a lot of our community sports, adult intramurals, and, you know, we're all washed up. But that could even be a cool outlet potentially of, oh, hey, this is our wiffle ball league. And that way everyone gets to know, like, as an adult, how you're crushing it potentially. So, yeah, the camp thing is a great analogy I didn't even think of. And then something, too, I thought of, I remember tryouts, you know, when they were being held January, February. You know, coaches are out there freezing their butt off, holding a pad and watching you throw from the outfield, hit your cutoff, what's your speed, all that that could even make every tryout more efficient, which is, again, another great resource for this tool. Yeah, I I think having something that's 
compiled is a lot better looking than just a handwritten chart, you know, and just getting thrown away. You, you get a guy that comes in two or three times to throw a pin for a tryout and you, it all compiles. That's that's going to be more useful. Well, I think it's just uh, it's immediately more useful is the thing. The handwritten charts aren't less useful per se. Right. It's just going to take you a little bit more work to to squeeze the juice out of it, if you will. Right. Yeah, so good. with that's these. Good. Yeah, it's just sorry, Tommy. But yeah, yeah with these, uh, it, again, the value comes from how quickly we can access information. And that's that's part of the future as well as being able to build out how successful kids are based on these analytics. So I talked to a coach that was the head coach at Abilene Christian, and he's got a he's got a system that he's been using for years now. And basically what it does is it takes metrics similar to what we're doing um, and puts a rating on pitchers. So it gives them kind of like the quarterback rating that you see in the NFL and it gives them a number rating. How valuable would that be if you're a coach and you can go in and say, you know, this pitcher is a 97 rating or this this guy's a 96 rating or 85 or whatever it is. And it takes into a lot more into account than just velocity because we see so much based on speed because that's where the numbers are at. But now we're able to put a number with everything else, with all the other things. And as a pitcher, it's so important to have, you know, good movement, good location. And we're able to quantify those metrics now and put those into a rating versus only having speed measurements. Man, that's so cool. Yeah, that's great. And I feel like I've almost gotten a full educational lesson on how do you become <laughs> an efficient <laughs> modern baseball coach. This is great. You know, one thing I'll touch off on what Tommy said was that he reached out to a coach and got some input and this coach already has his own system. And and we think that that's something that will be really valuable to not only for not only us, but the coaches as well as we have the ability to start to tailor some of these charts or whatever metrics they want to know or whatever information they're trying to figure out about their players. We have the ability right now to take that feedback from coaches and implement implement that in implement that into our app, which they could use. So they can kind of get out of this what they want. Yeah, that's good stuff. So guys, last two questions. These will probably be around the table, around the horn, you know, as fact. I, I, like like I like it. <laughs> so what is the end goal for for this team? That's what you guys are. Your team building a really cool piece of software to revolutionize high school sports. What's the end goal for you and how would you define success as a company and maybe individually as well? Uh, I think as a company, if if people start picking it up and start using it, um, that's obviously going to be an, a goal and you know success. But seeing these kids use it and seeing success stories, you take a kid that maybe he he's a good hitter, but every once in a while he goes zero for four. Well, we can track you. You went zero for four, but you didn't strike out. You hit seeds, and somebody caught it. So now your mental game's different. So that guy goes from maybe a 300 hitter to a 350 hitter. And again, you're scoring more runs, you're changing the lineup, you're more effective. So how can we help all these youth players learn more about the game and, and change their abilities quicker and get ready for college? Yeah, I, I think the real the end goal for us as a business is to help kids get to college or really just reach those baseball dreams, whatever it is. You know, as a baseball player, guys, we just want one more day. We want one more game, one more pitch, one more at bat. Right. And, and if we can if we can be a catalyst for kids to be able to get that one more at bat, that one more game. Right. And really reach their goals. I think we are successful. And individually, I, I'd really just hope that I can continue to, to grow. Um, I really hope that I can continue to grow as a person and, and continue to work with Jesse and Tommy and Matt. And and really, I'll see a lot of my own personal growth from seeing these guys succeed and, and us as a group as well. Yeah. And I, I love what Jesse said really in the beginning, like the very first thing he said about, you know, why did we start this app was they wanted to get better. They wanted to, they wanted to improve their team. Um, and then the end goal is that same thing uh, is to, to make those players better. And so when we, we think about this, it's, it's neat that the, you know, the, the very beginning of it is to improve players, but now we're able to scale that up to where instead of improving, you know, 15, 20 players, however many are on your team, now we're able to scale that across the country and reach millions of players. And so I think that's so cool. And it's it's amazing to me how much the game has changed by tools like this in the last four or five years. Um, I heard somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they said the game's changed more in the last four years than in the previous 40. Um, and I'd, I'd love to see us change along with it. You know, that's that's what I think success would be is to see 
uh, these players that are up and coming and they're like, what's my zone tracks data? That would be amazing for me. If I go back out and I play for the legends 12 years later <laughs> and all those guys are now <laughs> yeah. lo- using zone tracks and looking at it and seeing it there. So I, I think that's a huge part of it. But then also like, and I think personally success for me, like uh, I mentioned us going out to Moorhead and what I thought was so cool was just being there and we were, you know, we had a screen set up behind home plate and they're, they're scrimmaging at Moorhead's practice and I've got my laptop sitting there and I'm like actively coding the stuff so that we can tailor it for their improvement. And I thought that was such a cool thing. Like for me to be at a college practice working on building a tool for them, like that's already like a huge success milestone. And as we can grow that and be, you know, an analytics team for high school or for colleges or what, whatever it is that we end up doing with it. But I, I feel like that was such a neat thing to do that one, two, three times, however many we did it. Um, but I want to see that expand and happen more and more. Um, and so that's a huge goal as well. And then guys, my favorite question, this is what this all ties back into. So other than Tommy, because he's the one proving this, that you're never too old to do anything. What's the one piece of advice you guys would like to give any entrepreneur? Because again, you started a startup, you want to help entrepreneurs grow, but you're also wanting to make people see the value in what you're offering. So what's your one piece of advice for a community? If I had to say anything, I would give, I'd give people two words and it'd be take action. That's the biggest thing. You can have an idea. You can have a great plan. The biggest thing that we did was take action. Hey, we need, we need to start an LLC. Cool. Jesse's going to get the paperwork done, right? We need to change that on the app. Bam. Tommy's there. You know, and I will also commend these guys. You know, these guys are go-getters right? And they are take action people. And I can pull from those positive qualities, but that's what I would tell people. Get out there, take action, go do it. I come from a family of entrepreneurs and they, uh, they just tell you, take a risk. You know, if you believe in it and you love it and you think it's going to work, you think it's going to help people take the risk. What's the worst thing that can happen? You fail and you just, you start over. It's, it's, it's all good. Don't worry about it. I think, I think that's it. Just have some guts. And if you fail, you fail, but you'll learn from it and take that risk. Do I get to chime in on this one as well? Yes, you do. Okay, nice. Um, there's an old saying that's if you want to, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Um, and it's it's so cool for me. Like Garrett, I talked to you. Like I'm a huge fan of the podcast. Hey, can we get on the podcast? And here we are. Um, but for me, it's it's amazing. Like to be able to reach out to people and collaborate via, you know, via zone tracks or via Moolathon or via whatever app that I'm I'm building at the time. Um, but that's that's for me is like the biggest thing is, is find people to work with. Um, it also makes it been a huge part of that for me and for tons of other companies. Um, but you know, to, to be able to collaborate and to work with other people, I think that's the coolest thing because it's a little bit over a year ago that I'm going out on my own, um, as a freelance developer and I'm, I'm, I'm literally the only person in my company. Uh, and, it's it's so cool what that's morphed into now to bring everybody else now that's a part of it. Um, and really probably me being a part of their company more than anything, but they're, you know, um, it's just, it's so cool for me to have a community of people to, to work with and collaborate with. And that's probably my biggest advice is to, to find more people to work with. Y'all, that was good stuff. Synergy, uh, right? Yeah. Synergy. Let's go. Let's this do it happening. together. Well, Tommy, I'm glad that you got to have your major league debut on the podcast. And Absolutely. guys for Zone Tracks, thanks so much for not just pitching at Five Across and really set a cool milestone for our community, especially with the pandemic, but for coming in today, telling us your story, and hopefully every high school coach gets to listen to this. Absolutely. So cool. thanks again, guys. Hey, appreciate we your time. appreciate you. Thank thanks you. to Awesome Inc. for having us. And uh, hey, these guys believe in synergy. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesome Inc.'s podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevear and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in. And let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.